a little out of breath because there are a lot of books here and it is really heavy. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Today I will be hauling and unboxing books for the month of June, as well as announcing a giveaway in celebration of my YouTube channel turning one year old. My channel's anniversary was actually in March, so this giveaway is super late, but better late than never. <laughs> I'll be explaining the giveaway prizes and rules at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Now today, I'm hauling a large Right Stuff order. There's a lot of books here. <laughs> and I'll also be hauling some books from both Indigo and Amazon that I couldn't wait to haul and needed to include. I'm going to open all the boxes here today. <laughs> It's a little different than how I usually film my hauls, but we're going to see how it goes. So, I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice, and let's unbox and haul some manga. Now, I think the way to go about this is to open the small right stuff package first. So we're going to open this bad boy up and see what's inside. I love this sound, the pop. Okay, and oh, let's see what we have. We have some wonderful packaging. Right Stuff always packages their books so well. I never usually worry about these boxes. I have even had boxes come in damaged, but the books inside are always in excellent condition because they package their stuff so well. We have, I'm gonna put this down because I'm just gonna show you guys everything in the box anyways. We have Dragon Ball Super Volume 6, and I have a feeling most of these uh, books in this box are Dragon Ball Super, so I'm just gonna pull those out first. We have Dragon Ball Super Volume 12. Okay, so there are some other books in here too, but I'm just going to go over those later. We're just going to pull out all of the Dragon Ball Super first. So this is Volume 1. I really, really love this cover. I think that the art in Super is really well done. It's actually done by a different mangaka. It's not um, done by Akira Toriyama. And I think that the artist Toyo Taro, I think he did a wonderful job. So that's volume three. And uh, that's all the Dragon Ball Super in that box. The rest of the volumes are in the big box, so I'm going to open that up now and pull them all out. There's just something different about opening right stuff packages. Like, I love Indigo, I really do, but a lot of the books that I get from them are in separate packaging, whereas the right stuff packages are always like a big box of books. And it always feels like Christmas when you open it. So this box is way too heavy for me to show you guys to like on, oh, maybe it'll lift it up. We've got a lot of books in here. So I'm just going to dig through this box. I'm gonna pull out all the Dragon Ball Super and then that way we can put them off to the side. So we have volume 10. We've got volume 11. I love this cover. Look at Bulma and Vegeta. That is adorable. If you guys didn't know, Vegeta is my favorite character from Dragon Ball Z, so. And this is volume nine. And we have volume eight, volume 14. And then we have volume, volume two. Then we have volumes four and five. I am. Um, I really like this cover. And then we have 
7 and 13. I think that's everything. Okay, I'm going to put all of them together so that you guys can quickly see all the spines. Oh, right. Volume 15 I had to order separately because Right Stuff didn't have it in stock, so I actually ordered Volume 15 from Amazon. Did I say that already? <laughs> Okay, and here's everything together. So for those that don't know, which I mean, I highly doubt that you don't know what Dragon Ball is, but this is Dragon Ball Super. It's by Akira Toriyama. We've got volumes one through 15. These are rated teen and they are published by Viz Media. So I actually bought this series on a whim because Right Stuff had the complete collection minus volume 15 available. So. I created this Right Stuff order for the sole purpose of buying these books. And they were even on sale, I think, too, so it was definitely a stroke of luck. And because I'm from Canada, I had to spend a minimum of $250 USD to get the free shipping. So this series is really just like the tip of the iceberg. So Dragon Ball Super is the official, official sequel to the incredibly popular shonen series Dragon Ball Z. The manga takes place right after the Boo Saga and introduces Beerus, the god of destruction. I have watched the Dragon Ball Super anime up to the end of the Tournament of Power, plus I've seen the movies, but I believe there are some storyline differences in the manga, so I'm excited for that. These books are mostly for my husband though because he's a huge DBZ fan, but I plan on reading this series eventually. Okay, so we're actually going to go over the rest of the books that were in that small box, starting with volume four of Yakuza Lover. And this is rated mature and it's published by Viz Media. This Jose series has a fairly simple premise. It follows a college student who falls in love with the Yakuza boss. This volume of Yakuza Lover is actually going to be the deciding factor of whether I continue with this series or not. I wasn't impressed with volume three. It was the weakest volume so far. There was no storytelling or plot. It was just repetitive sex scenes. Now, don't get me wrong, I love smutty manga, but I need some substance with my spice. <laughs> the art is really beautiful, and I do really like Oya's character, so I really hope that this volume changes my mind on the series. And then we have volume 14 of Queen's Quality, and this is by Kyosuke Motomi. This is also published by Viz Media, and this is Rated Teen. I've really been slacking on this series, not because I haven't been enjoying it. It just doesn't have that addictive, must-read-now quality. I don't feel like I have to binge the whole series in a single night. So far, I've read up to volume 6, and it's been really fun. The series does like to information dump at times, but I feel like that happens more often with Supernatural and fantasy series. Basically, the books follow a couple of teenagers who are training to be sweepers, which are people who sweep away negative thoughts and emotions from people's minds. This series has surprised me in a lot of different ways thus far. There are a few twists and turns thrown in, but the highlight of this series for me is still the romance. It's very endearing and sweet. I'm not sure when I'll get back into this series. I don't know if I just want to read a couple more volumes or if I just want to binge what I have left. Decisions, decisions. I do think that this is probably the prettiest cover so far though. I feel like the covers of this series just keep getting nicer and darker. Mm. <laughs> and the last book in that box was Mashal Magic and Muscles Volume 5. I'm going to grab Volume 4 because I can see it in the bigger box now. So we've got Volume 5 and Volume 4. And this is by Hajime Komoto, and this is also published by Viz Media. And I believe this is just rated teen. So Mashal Magic and Muscle is one of those rare manga series that my husband has also started reading and enjoys. 
It's been a lot of fun talking about the manga with him. Now, for those unaware, Mashal Magic and Muscles is an ongoing comedic shonen following a boy without magical abilities in a world where the magicless are executed. In order to protect himself and his family, he must attend a prestigious magical academy and pretend to be magically adept by utilizing his strength and muscles. The narrative heavily, heavily parodies Harry Potter and it's been an entertaining and hilarious experience up to this point. It's definitely a welcome change from manga that I'm used to reading and I'm really excited to get back into the story. Um, what do I haul next? So I actually have some manga that aren't in a box and we're just gonna haul those right now. So we have volumes two through eight of Blue Flag by Kato. It took me over a year to collect these because this is a very popular series and the volumes were always out of stock. It took forever to get more volumes printed, but now I finally have them all. You can see here that I don't have volume three because when I opened my Indigo package, volume three was actually really badly damaged. So I ended up sending it back to Indigo and they are going to replace it for me. So thank you, Indigo. I really appreciate that. I'm currently buddy reading this series with my best friend, Jordaline. Make sure to check out her channel. Her booktube content is moi, amazing. As of filming this video, I have read five volumes and I've really been liking the series so far. It's a slice of life romance story centering on four teenagers in high school who are trying to navigate their feelings in an unexpected love quadrangle. The characters feel realistic and authentic and I appreciate how they are very different from each other. So far, it's been a really nice departure from romances I usually read. It's very refreshing and emotional. I've even cried multiple times already. Also, there's really strong LGBTQ plus representation in here. So if you haven't read this yet, it would be a great pick for Pride Month. Also, the art style in Blue Flag, is super cute. It has that shonen feel. A lot of the characters remind me of how mangakas draw shonen characters, but I actually really, really, really like it because it means that all of the characters look very distinct and you never get confused as to who's talking or which character's which, which I love. <laughs> okay, so now let's take another look in the big right stuff box here. Okay, so I see something that I really want to look at, so I'm just gonna kind of dig for her here. We have volume 13 of A Broad Story by Kaoru Mori. Wow. Oh, I feel like it's been forever since I've seen a new volume of this series. I am so excited to read this. So this series is rated, I believe it's rated older teen, and it is published by Yen Press. So the reason why I'm so excited to haul this book is because volumes of A Bride Story are usually released once a year because the mangaka dedicates a lot of time to the story, researching the time period and cultures, and of course, drawing the immaculate illustrations. I actually filmed a spoiler-free review of the first 12 volumes, so if you're interested in more details, you can check out the card on the screen and that'll take you to that video. But basically, this historical manga is set in the late 19th century and skips between multiple brides and their families throughout different parts of Central Asia with the main storyline focusing on the marriage between a 20-year-old woman and a 12-year-old boy. It sounds taboo, but their marriage is indicative of the time period and at the moment resembles a sibling relationship more than a marriage. That could change as time passes in the story, but there isn't anything indecent going on. 
if that was something that was worrying you. These books are on the pricier side, but they are completely worth it in my opinion. They are hardcovers and they have these beautiful, I think these are called dust covers. So really nice books. If you like documentaries and learning about different cultures or learning about women in this time period, I highly recommend that you check out this series. Okay, and then we have volume 10 of Night of the Ice by Yayoi Ogawa. This is rated 16 plus and is published by Kodansha. I really love these Night of the Ice covers because the characters are shiny and then the rest of the volume is matte and it just feels really nice. Night of the Ice is a rom-com Jose series following a career woman named Chitos who aspires to be a health and fitness journalist. However, it's hard for her to focus on her career when she's constantly having to attend ice skating competitions and tournaments because her childhood friend Kokoro needs her to recite a spell from his favorite magical girl anime in order to do well in these competitions. I have read volumes one through three of the series. I believe I read them all the way back in November. You can check out the card on the screen or link in the description if you'd be interested in seeing my thoughts on that. But I'm pretty sure I rated those books four stars. I've slowly been collecting the rest of the series. I think there's 11 volumes in total and I plan on, I plan on binging the rest of the series once I have all of the books. Also, just before filming, I realized that I don't actually own volume 9, so I'm going to have to order that ASAP. <laughs> and then what do we have in here? Alright, and then we have Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan by Gaku Kaze Kuze, and this is volume 3. I believe this is also rated 16 plus, and it is also published by Kodansha. So I hauled the first volume of this dark comedy in one of my first manga haul videos on my channel, and I still haven't started the series yet, but it does sound like something I would like, which is why I keep buying volumes. Basically, the premise follows a cynical 31-year-old named Uramichi who works as a host for a children's TV show and teaches the same exhausting life lesson on the program. Adulthood sucks. <laughs> now, I'm crossing my fingers that I'll enjoy this series. I do have high hopes for it because it sounds like something that I'd really like and I've seen a lot of people praise this series. I do love these covers. The back always has a, a rip on it and it's kind of like ripping away the facade, ripping away Uramichi's happy-go-lucky personality and you get to see like the real him. <laughs> but yeah, I really need to start this series soon because it has been a long time coming. <laughs> okay, and then we have two books in here that actually go hand in hand and that is my alcoholic escape from reality and my wandering warrior existence and these are both by Nagata Kabe. I believe these are rated older teen and they are published by Seven Seas Entertainment. So these go hand in hand because both these books are from the same autobiographical series, but I've only read the first installment, which is my lesbian experience with loneliness. Now, I really liked that book and ended up rating it five stars. It was a raw and honest memoir of Nagata Kabe's general search for identity, self-worth and happiness. Now, My Alcoholic Escape from Reality is the fourth installment of the series, and then My Wandering Warrior Existence is the fifth and final volume. I believe these books explore Kabe Sensei's struggles with family, independence, alcoholism, um, sexuality, and her longing for love and marriage. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to get to these because although I'm eager to read them, they are pretty heavy books, so I'll definitely have to be in the right mindset before starting them. And also I have to read the second and third volume too, so. <laughs> Ooh, okay. And then we have My Brain is Different, Stories of ADHD and Other Developmental Disorders 
and this is by Monzusu. This is rated 13 plus and it is also published by Seven Seas Media. Entertainment. Seven Seas Entertainment. This intimate one-shot is a non-fiction collection of stories featuring the struggles and triumphs of nine different people learning to navigate daily life with developmental disorders. As a parent of a child with ASD and sister to a sibling diagnosed with ADHD, I was excited to see a manga that shed light on these individuals and their disorders. Honestly, this sounds like a really helpful an educational piece of media that gives some insight into the personal lives and experiences of neurodivergent folks. I'm really looking forward to checking it out and learning some new things. Also, the art looks really, really cute. And then, let's take a look at this one. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so this is volume four of Skip and Loafer, story and art by Masaki Takamatsu. This is rated 13 plus and is also published by Seven Seas Entertainment. So I just started Skip and Loafer this year and I've really been I've really been enjoying it. It's probably one of my favorite manga in 2022 so far. The narrative follows a small town girl named Mitsumi who's been accepted to a prestigious school in Tokyo. So she moves in with her aunt to attend this school pursue her dreams and navigate new relationships. It's a very funny and wholesome slice of life story. The characters are wonderful, especially Mitsumi. She's ambitious, genuine, and very endearing. I like her a lot. I talked about the first three volumes back in my April wrap up, so make sure to check that out if you want to hear what I have to say. But yeah, I cannot recommend this manga enough. It's just super cute and it's just super feel good. I'll probably end up reading this tonight, if I'm being honest. <laughs> okay, so we have some other books here. I'm not done with the manga box yet, but I wanted to switch it up a bit. So let's open some of these up. Okay. We have volume two of Imakoi, Now I'm in Love by Ayuki, Ayuko Hata, Ayuko Hata. And this is published by Viz Media and this is rated teen. I really love the cover. And the back looks super duper cute too. The first volume of the shoujo series was a very fluffy and feel-good read. It follows a teenage girl named Mizusawa who is saved from being groped on the train by Yagyu, a boy from her school. But after that heroic event, Mizusawa develops a crush on him and after confessing her feelings, Yagyu agrees to them dating. This manga is a nice change of pace compared to most romance shoujo. Not only is the relationship established super quickly, but the couple is straightforward with each other. They ask each other questions and it's wonderful to see them communicating. I rated the first volume five stars. I think it was a great start to the series and I can't wait to see what this new volume has in store. And then, We have JK Haru is a sex worker in another world. This is the third volume and this is written by Kohi Ratori with art by J. Todd Yamada. Who is this published by? So this is published by Ghost Ship. Now, this series is super underrated in my opinion, but it's also a very heavy and graphic read that deals with a lot of triggering topics, so I can't really fault anyone for not wanting to read it. This series is sort of a darker take on the isekai genre, where a teenage girl dies in an accident and is transported to a very sexist and misogynistic fantasy world. She has to become a sex, a sex worker at a brothel in order to survive, and through her thoughts and experiences, readers get some realistic glimpses of what sex workers endure. It's not all doom and gloom though. This series is riddled with dark humor 
and sweet moments, so you do get a break from those upsetting scenes, but it's a very eye-opening and thoughtful narrative. The art is beautiful. It is fan service which isn't usually my jam, but for some reason I don't mind it at all in this series. If you can handle the subject matter and you're, look and you're looking for a mature adult story, I highly recommend this manga. Okay, I know what this one is. Let's open her up. Okay, so we have volume five of those not so sweet boys, and in my right stuff box, we have volume six of those not so sweet boys, and these are by Yoko Nogiri. They are rated 13 plus and they are um, published by Kodansha. Those Not So Sweet Boys is a series that I've been collecting since last year. I believe volume seven is the last volume, so not only is this series short, it's also almost finished. I have yet to actually start reading it and at this point I've decided just to wait until I have all the books. Now the story follows a high school girl named Midori who works a part-time job to help her family despite it being against school policy. Unfortunately, the chairman of the school board discovers Midori's secret but promises not to expel her if she can get three delinquent boys to return to school. This series has fairly good reviews on Goodreads. I think the art looks really cute and the premise sounds unique. I don't hear many people talking about it, but I am confident that I'm going to enjoy this series. We only have a few more books left. We have The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. This is volume two and it's by Sukiya and it looks adorable. I love the cover because it's, the wording is raised. What's that called? Is that embossing? But yeah, this looks adorable. <laughs> so I believe this is an ongoing slice of life series following a uh, Yakuza who's given the task to watch and protect his boss's daughter. It's supposedly very wholesome and cute. I haven't started this series yet, but I've heard nothing but good things, which is why I decided to pick up the second volume. I think the art looks really cute and the premise sounds sweet and funny. I look forward to checking this out when I need a feel good moment. Oh, the little girl in this series is so freaking cute, my gosh. Okay, and then I guess this is the last thing that I'm hauling today. We have Beauty and the Beast. Belle's Tale, and Beauty and the Beast, Beast's Tale. These are published by Tokyo Pop, and they are for all ages. When I saw these books for sale, I just had to have them. The Disney animated Beauty and the Beast film is a movie that's very near and dear to my heart. I love it so much. I'm not entirely sure what to expect from this series. I don't know if it adds anything new story-wise, but as for the format, I believe Belle's Tale is the story from Belle's perspective and then Beast's Tale is from the Beast's point of view. I'm really happy that I get to add these to my collection and I'll probably be reading them to my kiddos in the upcoming months. And that, friends, is the end of my June manga haul video. And as promised, we're now going to go over the prizes and rules for the giveaway. Now, the giveaway is a little bigger than my last one. There will be three prizes in total. Two lucky winners will each receive up to $25 Canadian to spend at Book Depository. These prizes are international. As long as Book Depository ships to your country, you can participate. The last prize is only available to people who live inside Canada and the US just because of shipping costs. But that lucky winner will receive volume one of Cheeky Brat by Miyuki Mitsubashi. And I think I have it right here. So I'm just gonna pull it out so that you guys can see. I don't mind if people want to enter to win both the Book Depository and Manga Prize. Just know that you can't win multiple prizes and also make sure that you follow all the rules. 
All you have to do to enter is number one, be subscribed to my channel and like this video. Number two, follow me on Instagram at my manga space. The link will be in the description below. Number three, use the hashtag book depository, all one word and or the hashtag cheeky brat, all one word, to enter the giveaways. Please make sure you use these hashtags properly in your comment as I'll be using them to pick the winners. And lastly, I want you to leave a comment letting me know what your favorite manga has been so far this year. It can be a newly released manga series or an older series, just something that you've started reading in 2022 and you've been thoroughly enjoying. The giveaway will be open as soon as this video goes live and will be closing on this date at midnight. I'll be responding to the YouTube comment of the winners on this date and will be asking the winners to DM me on Instagram. I will have all the rules and dates in the description, so make sure to check those out. Good luck to everyone participating and thank you to everyone for your continued support and encouragement. This channel wouldn't be where it's at without you guys. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!